Hi, this is Kevin with Garrison Dental Solutions, and today we are with Dr. Matthew Najad, beautiful Beverly Hills, California. So now we are going to place the ring in place, and like I mentioned, I always like to use the standard size, or it's actually called the tall size 3D ring, and the reason for that is it gives me the best adaptation all the way up onto the tooth. I don't want to have a lot of extra flash as I come up the proximal over here, and if you use the shorter, you tend to have good adaptation, but you lose adaptation as you come higher and higher. So I only use the short when I have a difficulty with retention, the, the ring won't stay on and it comes off frequently. Otherwise, I always want to use the orange as my starting point. So um, other thing is I like to bend the matrix band over like this prevents a lot of uh, material from getting in there and having a difficult time finishing. And now we're going to come in and place in the tall 3D ring. And I like to have it facing towards the mesial. It's the easiest for insertion. I oftentimes have the rubber dam clamp over here. I don't want to be going in the same direction. So I come right in and I also like to seat this ring pushing towards the matrix band. If you come this other direction like this, you come this way from the distal, you'll tend to bunch the matrix band up and create some creases or folds. So what I'll do is I'll hold this here, come in from the mesial and try to push towards the tooth or the surface I'm trying to close and then release. And then I verify everything. If I need to reposition anything, sometimes I'll just go ahead and loosen a little bit, tighten the matrix band either with my fingers or an instrument, and then let go again. And sometimes I can get better adaptation that way. So that's how I get very minimal finishing and cleanup by the way I've wedged, placed my matrix band, selected the right ring, and that's really most of the battle for me. The things you want to avoid are having a difficult time on cleaning, finishing, flossing through your contacts, so these are real big time savers for me. The other thing I'll do right before I do my actual restoration is go ahead and burnish in the contact area right over here. And I define it usually about one or two millimeters below the marginal ridge. And I try to do a two by three area and that's it. And remember, it's not the wedge that gives me the perfect contact. It's the combination of the thin matrix band and the wedging power of the ring. This ring creates just enough wedging on its own to have an ideal contact. If I wedge too tightly with the wedge, then I end up having a really tight contact and requires some finishing. It's difficult to floss and I've had patients complain about that.